Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Learning with Chrono. As you can see, today we are going to be covering the computer craft computers. Now before I start, I would like to say that I will not be teaching programming of the computers. To program in the computer craft computers, you do it in Lua, which is a uh, common programming language for games and such. Uh, apparently World of Warcraft programs in Lua. I don't know. Uh, personally, I never heard of it before I learned about computer craft computers. So that's just me being out of the loop. I don't know. However, let's get started. So here we see the different components of computer craft. This is the basic computer itself. This is the basic monitor. We got the advanced computer and the advanced monitor, a disk drive, a printer, and all the different types of turtles. Like, this is just the regular turtle. This is a melee turtle. This one is a digging turtle. That one's a mining turtle. That one's a felling turtle. And this one's a farming turtle. Now, as you can see from the tools attached to their side. You can tell kind of easily what they're for, obviously for tilling the soil, cutting down trees, mining blocks, digging dirt, and attacking things. Now this way, on our little uh, grid here, like I said, this is just the regular row. This is the wireless row. This is the crafting row. And this one, being all alone, is a wireless crafty turtle. Now, what do these all do? Well, the regular ones do pretty much what they're designed to do. Uh, just you do it through the regular interface. These ones will do it wirelessly, so you can program them from one of the computers. These ones will be able to craft things if they have them in their inventory. And this one is wirelessly controlled crafting. Now, let's just start with the basics, the, the, the introductory stuff. Um, the difference between the basic computer and the advanced computer is basically colors and mouse control. The advanced computer is, it has colors and mouse, whereas the basic computer does not. To access the user interface for the computer, you just right-click on it, and it brings up Craft OS 1.4. Now, if you've ever played with uh, DOS or Unix, you will find this stuff familiar. But if you've never played with DOS, Unix, or a command prompt anywhere, then you might be a little confused on how this works. This is purely command-driven stuff. So let's start out with the most basic command, dir, and that brings up a list of the files that are in your current directory. Right now, because we just have the little arrow there, right here, it says that we are in the root directory, the base directory. And it's telling us that there is either a file or a folder called raw. Now, it doesn't distinguish between the two, like, say, uh, MS-DOS would or Unix would. Uh, MS-DOS would distinguish it by actually saying it's a folder or actually having the file extension after the file name. Or Unix will be colorful. It will have different colors for the different types of files and directories. This does not but I can tell you that ROM is a directory. So to go into that directory, we type in cd space ROM. Okay, and now we can see that we're in the directory ROM. This is our what's called our working directory. This is where all commands will be from. And we hit a dir again, or it's alias ls. Or it could be the other way around. It's the ls command and dir is the alias. I don't know. They both do the same thing. So we see apis, help, 
programs, startup. So we got a bunch of different things. Now let's see if that startup is a directory or a file. I'm going to guess it's a file because I know what it does, but I'm not 100% sure. So if we go cd space startup, we got a not a directory. So it's smart enough to tell us it's not a directory. So if we want to go into the file to see what it is, we type in edit space startup. Now, this is how we can view or edit all of the files in a computer. And we can see all of this stuff, which is, uh, well, coding. Stuff that I won't be covering mostly. I'm sure if I actually read this I could understand what it says, but I'm not 100% sure. But let us go back one directory, which is the command cd space dot dot. Now cd space dot references this local folder. If we just do cd space dot we will stay in this folder because the single dot references itself. So it references the current working directory. But the dot dot is one directory up. And no dot 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 does not push you two directories up. So we type in cd space dot dot and that takes us back to root because that's the next directory level up. So we can see that we just have the ROM folder in here. Now we can put stuff in here, like uh, say we want to put a file called hello. So we type in edit space hello. Now one would think that this shouldn't work because we can't edit a file that doesn't exist. But this program is smart enough to create it for you. So you're not, you don't have to create the file and then edit it. So we just edit hello. And there we go. We're in our basic text editor. Now if I just type in hello, it's not going to know what to do. I mean, I can. We can uh, save this, exit it, and we can see we now have hello there, but if we try to run it, just we get an error message because it doesn't know what, what's going on. But that's because these files, they're all executable files, so it's expecting a certain type of language in the files. The Lua code I referenced earlier. Now, I, I, like I said, I'm not going to get into programming, but I will show a few things, just for example. Like if we wanted to actually say something, like if we type in hello, it responds back, you know, hello world. You know, the simple basic Hello World app. Uh, anybody who's done programming, they know that app because that's usually the first thing you do. Now, to do that, we have to tell it exactly what we want it to do. So we want to tell it to print, and then we give it open curly or parenthesis. What is that? Uh, some kind of bracket. I'm not sure. And we give it quotes, hello world, end quotes, and then end parenthesis. Now, what does this all mean? Well, the print tells the computer to call what's called a function that's built into the operating system called print. And basically what that does is will print or will access the computer's interface and print out what you tell it to. So when we tell it print, inside the parentheses we tell it what we want it to print and then we have to tell it quotes because we're not referencing like a file or anything like that we're actually telling it we want it to print specifically hello world and it will just when we run this it will print specifically the ascii characters hello world so to save this we hit control and then save, we just hit enter, and then we hit control again, we use the arrow keys to access the interface, and then exit, and that brings us back to the command prompt. And now when we 
you know, ls this, we see nothing has changed, but if we run hello, we get the response, hello world. Now we could do other things like change the size of the text and you know, where it is, we clear the screen and all that fun stuff, but that's getting into programming and that's not what these videos are about. Let's go into a few other commands that we have access to, like uh, simply reboot, and it will reboot the computer. Basically what it did is it reset everything back to how it was when you first turned it on. I mean, our files are still there. We can see the hello file is still there, but basically it just turned off. It's, it's like turning off the computer and turning it back on again. Duh, I should have said that initially. That was the wise thing. Another command is we have shut down, which is basically turning off the computer. And that's it. It just goes dark. And then to get out of the Unity interface, we hit the escape button. Now we can also do that with this active, so if we're like running a program or something, we can leave this active and just hit escape. And we can see that it's still active. We can see the little blinking cursor. Now this is not going to show what's actually on the screen. This is all it shows no matter what's happening. But that's okay. It, it looks cool. Okay, from a computer geek's point of view, it looks cool. Now let's take a look at a few other things we can do. Like... We go into ls, or no, no, cd space rom ls. Uh, let's go into cd space programs ls. We can see we're getting deeper in. We can see more stuff and everything like that. Like we can see our commands, our shutdown command, our reboot command that we just played with. Lua is the interface you use when you want to program something. We can see we can access HTTP if your server has that enabled. We can make directories. We can access the monitors. All kinds of cool stuff. We can even access the turtle. One thing I want to show is this secret here. Of course, it's not terribly a secret because anybody who knows anything about DOS or Unix, or hopefully by the end of this video has watched this video, will be able to find this easily enough. So CD space secret ls and we can see one file in there a long time ago so if we type a long time ago we can see it's basically running its own little program and this is one thing it can do these computers can do a lot more but we'll be getting into that a little bit later now we can see that this is the ascii version of star wars now this was a big thing a little while back uh, we can also see that it's actually not spanning properly, but that's because this program wasn't designed to be viewed on here. Now, obviously if I click on anything, if I hit escape, I mean, it's still running, it's still doing its thing. Now how do we stop it? I can't type anything. I mean, nothing happens when I type, so how do we stop it? Well, to interrupt a program that's running, that's control T, and you have to hold it for a second and see it terminated it. So T stands for terminate. Control S will shut the PC down, and control R will reboot it. Now these are hard commands. Anything that's running, it does it anyways. So if you are it, it getting into programming them, and you program something that gets stuck in an infinite loop, you don't have to pop it, you don't have to like exit out, break the computer and place it back down. You just take control T and hold it for a second and it will terminate the program. Now I would assume they do that just in case, or they make you hold it for a second just in case you don't want to click control like you wanted to hit shift T instead of control T. So they make you hold it for a second before it actually does anything. Now, again, 
I bring your attention back to this hello program that we created. Now if I shut down this PC, exit out, switch to the correct game mode because I just realized that if I pop this it will definitely break. And let's see if just punching it pops it. Yes, so we get our computer back. So this is the same exact computer that I just had that had the Hello program on it. But if I open this and we hit LS, the Hello program isn't there. And why is that? That's because it thinks it's a brand new computer. It doesn't realize that it's the same computer. To do that, we actually have to label the computer. Now, it's quite obvious why they put this particular function in there. They did that because, you know, you're working on a program, you work on it for, you know, two hours, you don't want to lose it every time you pop it, pop the computer. So you type in label, and that gives you all the label commands. You get your label usage. So if we type in label get, we can see that we do not have a computer label. So let's set one. Label set. You know, and just emphasize that it's my computer. So we set the label to chrono. So if we get label get now, we get the computer label is chrono. Cool. So let us create the hello file again. All right, and we'll just type in some random gibberish in there because we're not going to run the program, so it doesn't matter. So we save it, we exit it, and we can see the Hello program is there now, so shut it down. We pop it again. So still same exact computer. Open up the interface, we hit LS, and we still have our Hello program. I'm going to bring in the monitor, too. I'm also going to change my game mode real quick. Now, the monitor is pretty cool. What you do is you just set the monitor right beside the computer, and you can access it through the computer. So, like, if I want to run that one secret program that we found... Now, to run a long time ago in the monitor, we type in monitor. To tell it that we want to use the monitor, we have to tell it what side the monitor is on, so in this case, right, and then we type in the program we want to run a long time ago. And we hit enter, and it will say running a long time ago in the right monitor. Now we can see it's doing something. We can see the text doing its thing, but we can also see that it is horribly, horribly cut up. And that's because it wasn't designed to run in a screen this small. What you have to do is add monitors. Now you can see I'm just placing them down, and as long as the shape is rectangular, it will show up. Now this isn't going to be enough monitors. Oops. Hmm. It kept my label. Even though I'm in creative, I was worried about that. But let's pop these and let's make a big monitor. Okay, now we can see that that's as big as it can go this way. We can also see that it's not connecting until it's actually a full uh, rectangular shape. And that's the wrong side. Now you can make some pretty big monitors. And I think you can make it 4x3, which is the standard... 
uh, well, old school, yeah, monitor size. Yeah, that looks about 4x3. I could count them, but yeah, whatever. So let's try this again. Space ROM, CD space, programs, CD space, secret, uh, monitor, left this time because we moved the monitor, and then a long time ago. And now we can see it like we're watching it on a giant movie theater screen. Now, obviously, we could have different sizes. Uh, I believe this is a uh, like a 16 by 9 setup, so widescreen. So we could take out some of the monitors from the top, and it would still look fine. Which you might want to do, because, I mean, we're watching a movie on a computer screen. You know, to make it look good, might as well have it widescreen. Now, on the notes of file systems and accessing programs, let's talk about the disk drive. Now, this is much like a disk drive that you would have in your older computer. It actually supports floppy disks. And basically, they're used for transporting files from one computer to the other without using the rednet, which is complex to use to say the least which we won't be getting into in this episode so to access the disk drive we just plunk down the drive itself then we got to get a floppy and we can see they come in a bunch of different colors now to make these you just make a floppy and then dye the floppy and you can get your different colors they don't actually do anything different they're just color coded so we could take our floppy disk and we put it in the drive. Or if you want, you can shift right click and it will put the disk in the drive itself. And now if we go into the root, we can see we now have disk, ROM, and hello. The computer is instantly recognizing that we attached disk to it. And then we have the standard ROM folder and our Hello program that we created before. So if we go into the disk folder, which uh, for those Unix people out there would be like mounting the drive. If we ls this, we see we have nothing in there. There's nothing in the disk at all. So... Let's just uh, see if we can copy our hello program to the disk. So we type in our copy command, which is the standard copy command, copy space the file you want to copy from space to where you want to copy it to so in this case we want to copy the hello file to the disk folder slash hello file so if we ls now we can still see we have the hello program but if we do cd space disk and an ls there we can see we have the hello program is there as well and if we edit hello, we can see we have a random bunch of gibberish, exactly what we did before. Now if we shut this down, go in here, we pull out our floppy disk, and we go over here to a computer that's pre-set up. We can see if we go in here, we have nothing, except for the disk. And cd space disk ls oh we got a startup in here because we were playing with the disk before so this is a different disk so we take out that disk and we set it aside and then we take our disk put it in the drive 
and then we ls our disk again, we see we have hello. And then that way, you can take your files that you've spent all that time creating and put them on wherever you want. Now we can also use the move command, which will take, which will move the hello file in the current directory to forward slash, which designates just root. Hello. Now if we ls the disk, we see we got nothing on the disk, but if we cd space backslash and ls there, we got a hello program there. So now we copied it from the other computer to the disk and then moved it from the disk to this computer. So I hope that was educational for you guys. Stay tuned. I will be putting up other episodes, specifically how computers can use red power. They can output a redstone signal from pretty much any one of their sides. We will eventually be covering the printer. We will be covering the red net. We will be covering things like how to download files from Pastebin actual internet not just some computer craft internet which you can create and that's a cool concept and yes we will even be covering how to use the turtles hopefully this gave us a good foundation to start on and if you like this video please leave a thumbs up if you really like this please favorite and if you want to see more hit the subscribe button so till next time i will say keep playing the game and have fun.